In Elden Ring, there are two ways to protect yourself. Get more health or put on heavier armor. All these chumps think that getting more health is the best solution, but that can't be right. If we just build the heaviest character with the heaviest weapons, obviously we'll be fine. We'll even try to get the heaviest of armors into light equipment load as well, just for good measure. To watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We find amazing ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join my Patreon to support my bad ideas, and let's get started by failing immediately. So we're actually starting mid-run. Sorry gamers, during the holiday I forgot to grab the VODs of my streams. There's just a whole stream missing, but up to this point I guess we got some heavy armor and a whip and we're on our way to get the pickle recipe. It's really easy, just hit patches. The whip is so good against NPCs. That's important, there's a lot of NPCs at the beginning of this run. So with patches dead we can start over. Oh god. You see, for the heaviest armor, you need to have Batches alive in Volcano Manor, which he won't be if he's a corpse in Murkwater. So despite losing a whole stream worth of footage, it's fine because I screwed up twice. I'm so good at failure, I fail at failing. I'm God's perfect blunder, let's start over. Our first goal is to get that Hoslo Whip. It's really good for NPCs, so after a quick L to the Grafted Scion, we get a horse in Limgrave and boogie to Lernia. Since we start as a wretch for maximum potential endurance, we don't have any armor yet, and the lobsters can one-shot us. Twice, before we even get to Hoslo. He's normally kind of a pushover, but we don't have a weapon. We have a stick. Sticks are fine. They're not great at getting around a tower shield, though, or getting in on a big whip. And with no armor, we bleed really fast. But even though Hoslo kills us twice, we kill him at the same time on the second attack attempt, and he doesn't respawn. Now we have a whip and a mask. Let's go get some armor. Our first armor set is Bernie's set. It's not the heaviest armor in the game, but it's the heaviest you can get early. Unfortunately, that means we have to beat based Bernie, and he's got a ton of poise from his heavy armor. A vacuum wave to mess us up, and he just kind of runs at us. That's actually good though. It's easy to predict, and we can use the whip to keep him at bay. Bernie set acquired. We actually don't want to level up early since there are some invading NPCs that will scale with our level, so the worse we are, the worse they are. In the Saoirse Ronan River well, we can activate the elevator to reach the chasm in Kaled. There are golem archers there, scaled for Kaled, so it doesn't matter if we have endgame armor, they're still gonna one-shot us. Second try, I make it past them and quit out behind the Great Jar to deactivate their aggro. I'll be honest, sometimes we're gonna have to cheese this. Fun fact, the Great Jar AI will just fall off the cliff if you hide here. Let's count the clumsy champions. One, uh, uh, uh. And two, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, a uh, three, three fools. Now we have the great Jarsenal charm, which boosts our max equip load by 19%. And more importantly, we can start leveling up. We warp to Grail and get the Dectus Medallion and Radigan Sword Seal before dying to the Pharaoh Rats. That's death number six with no bosses. Now imagine dying in Fort Height. All the rats kill us before we can even get to the Dectus Medallion, but we can head back in and scoop it up. Since we can't level up any stat that deals damage until our endurance is capped, the only damage boost we can get is from better weapons. Killing the Crystallion is pretty easy since whips are strike weapons. Then we can head into Altus for the Bell Bearing 2 in the Sealed Tunnel. For the runes to get the 89 levels we need, we'll need the pickle recipe. Nerd juice is easy, the whip just sort of stops him from getting in. Then Patches surrenders. No! Don't kill him. Lesson learned. We just buy the pickle recipe from him, and now we can get thick. We donk the Tibia Mariner for a few things. The Death Spaghetti will come in handy later, but the Skeletal Militia don't cost very much mind and will help us with the Clean Rot Knights. First, there's two of them. That's great, but even better, they don't die when they die. Unless they're hit on the ground, they'll come back up and keep distracting the boss so we can kill the boss safely. The Golden Scarab will give us 20% more runes. We get it for every run, but this is the first run we need it. 89 levels just for the endurance and 50 levels for our strength to carry the heaviest weapon. That's a total of 139, and no vigor for all of that because we need the other stats first. So let's get the Uchi Katana to bleed the Dragon Barrow Dragon faster. We need 15 dexterity to wield it, which we can kind of get with the dexterity physic tier, but not long enough to kill the dragon. That's why we have Radigan Sword Seal though, but we'll have to hot swap it in with the Golden Scarab at the end for extra runes. More endurance. Disregard vigor. Acquire endurance. Flame of the Red Mains should carry us through, but wait, what happened? Thank you. 
It can still give a weapon fire damage, I guess. Let's use that to kill the putrid avatar in Kaled. We almost beefed it to Elden Stars Jr., but I still got it. If we kill Margaret, we get another pocket. So a talisman can do something other than boost our runes. Let's take advantage of our big endurance and use guard counters. The shield we picked up at Sersha Ronan's house is 100% physical, meaning that Margaret's cane won't deal any damage if we block it. Then guard counters can deal big stance damage to let us get some crits in and some bleeds. Now we'll go fight the putrid avatar in Grail. It's just like the last one, except even the weakest attack it has will kill us. One single beam from the Elden Stars Jr. We died six times. Look at Flame of the Red Mains failing us. It's so sad to see an old friend suffer. The last time we dodge well enough and end it with the damage from the flame. RIP buddy, we'll never use you again. Grail ain't getting any easier, so let's just fight him now. He's pretty easy if you just don't get hit. I make that mistake twice, but the third try we get a couple of stance breaks and combo the hell out of his head. It's kind of rad that you can just kill a late game boss effectively at level one. Getting through the danger path of Stormvale is surprisingly easy. The ballista are scaled for early game, so our heavy armor actually works here. What a concept. Against Godric, I bring out the skeletal militia. It's not like I'm using my magic for anything else. They die and are reborn, but mostly they're just a distraction. That'll let us get off a solid combo for some bleed before phase two, then two heavy attacks will break Godric's stance in phase two, so we can win with a big crit. Considering we're pretty much always going to be at full health or dead, might as well kill Gil for the Ritual Sword Talisman. Altus scaled damage doesn't tickle, but come on, it's Gilka, I'm fine. For more consistent and consistently ranged damage option, let's take out the Knight's Cavalry for the Ice Spear Ash of War. For some reason I was tackling it on my feet, don't do that gamers, get on your pony. Only get off when the dude is on his back and you can get really deep in him. Probably a better way to say that. I tried the Ice Spear against Exicus, forgetting that we didn't level the spear up at all yet, so we just slash him up for enough runes to level up the spear. Radon is hard, but he's not getting easier for 130 levels, so let's just do it now. At least we can summon the homies. Thanks to our armor, we can live a hit once. The other five times, we do not. Basically, we need to space out the Ice Spears, which is hard because his swords have a longer reach than our Ice Beam. Eventually, we get a Stance Break and some Frostbite, then switch to the Uchi since Frostbite takes 10 seconds to recycle. He is almost dead as he jumps up, then jumps down to get shrekt. There is another way to raise our stats without leveling up, so let's cheese it by going through Castle Morn and whipping the Leonine Misbegotten. Before you fight him, there's another whip we didn't grab for this run, but there's your hint on how to beat this boss. His poise is low enough that a whip interrupts most of his combos and keeps him away. Fight the lion like a tamer. He drops the Grafted Blade Greatsword, which has a special ability that boosts your stats by five each. It's like 40 levels for free. We can get another 40 levels if we activate Godric's Great Rune, though we don't do it all the time, it's a special occasion thing. To actually use the Crafted Sword, we need more strength, but we can get it with the Star Scourge Heirloom and Fort Gale. While here, let's get the Lion's Claw Ash of War by beating the Lion. We're so good at killing lions, what a weird thing to be good at. There's also another way to get free runes. First, we kill a Dung Beetle for the Poison Mist. We kill a Dung Beetle for the... We kill a Dung Beetle for the Poison Mist. We don't have a casting seal, so I trade in the Death Spaghetti for one from Not Malaketh. Final piece of this cheese is getting two fingers from a hole, and once we pull those fingers out of the hole, it's gonna get stinky. We gas the Tree Sentinels outside Altus. It's slow, but the run is already gonna be slow, and I needed to eat dinner at some point. We did the same thing to the Draconic Tree Sentinel. Took a little over a half an hour both, and I cut that down to 30 seconds for you. You're welcome. I think that's enough endurance for now, especially since I got killed by Sans Undertale on the way up to Mount Gelmnir. Snake Eater reference for the ladders, you know the drill. And we head into Volcano manner to get some assassination coordinates. Hey, where's Bernie? Who knows? Istvan isn't too tough. We just spam the ice spear and now Patches is in Volcano Manor. Can you imagine if we killed that guy? That'd be embarrassing. Hey, we actually have to go up the ruin strewn Oedipus again. I'm really nostalgic for it. It is my favorite mother trucking level in the game. The Magworm is really weak to the ice spear since it can hit his face when he's on the ground or even when he stands up. Silly Makar, you're not a person anymore. With the dragon slain, the bull goat is here and the goat is harder than the dragon. He just doesn't give a shoot. His armor is so thick and we get squished. Second try, we got it done and can put on his armor. It's the heaviest of every piece of armor possible in the game with one exception, the head. The heaviest helm is the pumpkin head. First 14 attempts to farm it go like this. So no head. But the 15th attempt goes like this. So no head. Now we're thick, so let's go bring the boys to the yard. At this point, I didn't realize how many boys I needed. I thought I only needed one boy, the Dung Eater. So as we made our way into the capital, we grabbed the Seedbed Curse, then traded that for the Dung Eater Key and cowabunga into the sewer, then died to the hands outside the Dung Eater cell, the Omen by the Ladders, and the Gargoyles on the pipes one, two, three times before making it to Sewer Moog. We're up to 27 deaths now. Let's try not to get any more. 
Ow, 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 ow. Dung Eater isn't enough boy. We need more boys. The boys we need are the Great Shield Soldier Ashes. They're in Radon's hole. The Great Shield Soldiers have great shields. It's in the name, but it pretty much stops them from taking physical damage from the front. They're also dirt cheap in terms of magic and we have an upgraded mind. Beat up the Mimic tier. It's not wearing any armor and the boys just don't let it get away. Back to Moog. Other than his Splatoon attacks, all of his swings are physical. So the boys bully him down and we finally get the win. Behind Moog, we can grab the fingerprint shield. Wait. God damn it, I forgot to kill Morgoth. It's on my to-do list. On the way to Morgoth, we have to fight the Godfrey Shade. He only has physical damage, so our boys do not care. There's a Black Knife Assassin that goes really smoothly. Maybe we'll go get Electo for some runes later. Morgoth is rough. The holy damage goes through the shields of the little boys and the armor of my big boy. I tried summoning Melina to help, but she was probably more harm than help. When you summon an NPC, they raise the boss's health and stance resistance. After four deaths, it's just the boys, and my theory was correct. His stance breaks faster, so we can kill him and make our way back to the sewers. I'll have you know, we only died three times falling down to grab the fingerprint shield, the heaviest thing you can carry in the game. While here, I realized that using the strategy to raise our stats by 10 each with the grafted sword and the rune arcs would make the frenzy flame seal scaling with four different stats pretty good. How long could it take to find out if this theory was correct? Not too long. Get the Morn Castle grape. Talk to Irina. Oops, she died. But now we can talk to Hyetta, totally different woman. Get another grape in Stormvale, then a grape from Vike. Get fingered and burn Hyetta's eyes out for the frenzied flame seal. That was only 17 minutes. Oh, we still need a spell to cast with. I think Pest Threads worked great for Spider-Man. Let's try that. Summon a girl to help our boys with Commander O'Neill and his boys. It's boy on boy action. Gotta love that. Cure Millicent. Bring her an arm. Then we can buy Pest Threads from Spider-Man. That's 18 more minutes. Total of 35, but it's about to start crushing it. Not really. Uh, we're just gonna use the Ice Spear on Smarag. We're doing the Ronnie quest only because it blocks off three high rune bosses and we need a lot of runes. Carry a Manor. Loretta. Knight's Sacred Ground. For some reason I grabbed the Mimic tier. You have to have 600 HP to summon it, so we're not going to be able to do that. We're so close to capping off the Endurance, so let's go to Kaelid and waste some more high rune bosses. Beastmen of Faramazula are perfect for the boys, just physical damage. The Godskin Apostle at the bottom of Divine Tower of Kaelid is not as much. They have a black flame and the boys don't like that. However, all but one of its attacks are physical in the first phase, and around half don't have black flame in phase two, so it only took three tries. More runes in Mountaintops of the Giants. The Erdtree Avatar doesn't take a lot of damage from the Pest Threads, never mind, let's stop trying trying that. The boys aren't useful. Elden Star's Jr. is a guarantee, so it's better to just shoot this thing with the Ice Spear. Borealis is an Ice Dragon, so you'd assume it resists the Frostbite, but nah, still got a face. It gets a little messy. I tried to use the Uchi, but then the Physic tier ran out, so I had to hot swap. These extra bosses killed us four times. Up to 44. God, I miss Vigor. Fire Giant Time, he's worth a lot of runes, and the physical damage should be heavily resisted by our heavy armor, right? Uh, no. Let's get Rod Arrows. It's easy. The Bell Bearing Hunter is in Limgrave. Limgrave bosses don't have a lot of health and why does it hit so hard still no death but what the hell that'll let us buy the bones we need for arrows now we just need some rot butterflies from the abandoned cave and one and two together it's rot arrows it takes like 20 to actually apply the rot to the fire giant this isn't happening yet or more accurately after five deaths i just like need a break i don't know why i thought nile would be a break sure it's more boy on boy action we all love that but after our boys dominate his boys nile's massive length absolutely tears our boys apart and his huge vape clouds. Despite his frosty vape clouds though, he does not resist the frostbite condition or the stance pressure from Ice Spear, so on the fifth attempt, we got him. Now we can enjoy those tasty, tasty consecrated snowfield bosses. You don't even need to fight the worm, you can just make the octopus fight it instead, but then the octopus forgot we were its best friend. Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with this world. So we lost the pickle. That's okay. It's only like one level of runes. Putrid Avatar is also free as long as you don't get hit. That's kind of all the bosses now. This is basically the Sans run, except instead of spells, we're using weapons. And we don't have a clean rot knight best friend. We have boys, which boys are fine. But oh wait, is this gonna get hard? All in all it was just a break in the wall. Inside the yellow anus, there's a little weevil named Astel. He has weirdo hitboxes, he's a little weirdo, and he killed us four times before we gave up to do something else. We didn't even beat him. Get used to that. First, let's go upgrade our boys. The Windham Catacombs kills us twice, but then we kill the Erdtree Burial Watchdog, so it balances out as long as uh, two to one is balanced. Did you know if you go down the Snake Eater ladders backwards, the Grafted Scion will try to attack you, but it won't land where it's supposed to and just die from gravity? That's kind of funny. The Gelmney Hero's Grave has some 
more weed for the boys, but we die on the way out. Time to die more. I generally don't fight the gargoyle outside not Malaketh's house, despite fighting other bosses in the area, because the gargoyle sucks. It's so fast, it hits so hard, it can't be status, it's just a horrible fight. But we need runes. And we're out of other bosses, so I died four times. It janked on this cliff, that's funny, but it didn't kill it, so then I died a fifth time, just for good measure. If you're keeping track at home, this death to the fire giant is number 69. Ha <laughs> ha, nice. Next try against it, we actually get to phase two, and it's kind of easier. His face is easy to hit with the ice spear, so we can clear him out and make our way to Faramazula. The godskin duo is never fun, but at least we have Bernie. Wait, where's Bernie? It seems in your anger, you killed her. No! That's one less boy, but we still have plenty of boys and we can get a stance break faster than normal since Bernie ain't here. And they have less health. Once one is stunned, we unload with the rod arrows. The god skins are actually susceptible to status effects, unlike the fire giant, which just pretends to be. First try win. Two deaths at the swag jump though. It's not actually free, you know. Then we can battle Alexander to get the talisman that boosts our ashes of war, like the ice spear. Getting in and out of the giant conquering hero's grave will let us cap off the boys before making our way to the Mogwin Palace via the Penguin Noble. I call him that because he's a sanguine noble, but cold. It's like a regional form from Pokemon. Before fighting Moog, I go get the tier that stops his bleed in the phase transition. Now, do I remember to equip it? Uh, no. So first try is pretty much a guaranteed fail. Still, let's get the boys out. Spray that spear and break that stance really close to 50%. We'll chug really hard to get through the kneel attack. The boys are enough of a distraction in phase two, so we get another stance break and first try Moog with no vigor for the second time and without using the right tier. Why is he so much easier when we have no health? We died several times to sewer mode. What is happening? It's the boys. Okay, I'm feeling confident. I was just taking on the silly harder Astel instead of the other. So let's go back to the Ronnie quest. Say hi to Phalanx Demon's Holes, Bully Blyde and his boss jerk. And oh God, how do I get through the Lake of Rot? The first time I died, but I actually managed to squeak through the second time, just needed all the red flasks instead of any blue flasks. Nothing's gonna stop us now, except the Kindred of Rot on the way to Estelle. That kills us twice with Pest Threads, wish ours did that damage. Eventually we make our way to Estelle, but I didn't have any blue flasks. So I only had the base level of mine from being a wretch, which isn't a lot, and we died six more times before I ran out of time for the rest of the day. Stream three, here we come. Going back for the blue juice only got us killed by the spiders two more times, and then the big ass Stell Spider three more times before we finally got in and I spear it down. Hooray! Now we just have to go do all of Raya Lucaria, which won't give us enough runes to level up once at this point. Yikes. Red Wolf died, Moongrim died, Renala kills us, oh my god, but eventually we win. Even though our boys are nowhere to be seen for phase two, where are my boys? Where are they? At least now we have a wedding ring and can get up to the Moonlight Altar for two more bosses, Adula and Electro. Adula went a little too far and teleported away before busting out the big ice sword, but we don't die. I guess I don't die to Electro. The Black Knife Assassins are a lot of trouble for me, generally. I just wait for the big silly moves and hit it with the ice spear, though, and that kind of worked. After six more deaths to Estelle, I give up and decide, let's go try Malekith. How hard could that be? Oh. My. God. No. Please. Stop. Uh, let's try Rykard. Hey, Corey, please don't put in another title that would imply this won't go well. Oh, this is gonna be bad, huh? The Godskin Noble on the way isn't hard, it's less than half as hard as the Godskin Duo. Since the foreshadowing made it seem like Riker would be bad, I don't wanna start the fight right away. Instead, I get the spear, dip out, and level it up to plus seven before we even attempt it. Let's get it going. There's literally a magic weapon in here to help us kill the boss. Sure, the boss can one-shot us, but that'll balance out, right? No, uh, 14 deaths. Back to, uh, Malekith, maybe? Yeah, we get Malekith pretty easily. The boys and the spears do their thing. It's all about getting the rhythm and not getting hit. Because if you don't get hit, you don't die and you win. Simple. Maybe Placidious Axe next. We've never done Placidious Axe on the channel. So after an embarrassing tumble on the way there, we easily show Placidious Axe how to die. Four times. Okay, right card. Nope, died 17 times. Get the bell bearing to level up the spear the rest of the way, but while we're here, might as well try Placidious Axe again and die again. Uh, we need runes to level up the Serpent Spear, so back to Astel. No, three more deaths. Where do I go? The Godskin Duo went well, but I don't know what else to do. Oh, hey, let's do the Godskin Duo again. There's some ghost versions in the Spirit Caller Cave, but they're actually harder since they can't be affected with status effects. So guess how many deaths we get? Did you get your guess in? Type it in the comments. It was 
four. If you guessed four without editing your comment, I'll do your character request. Just kidding, I don't read the comments, you dorks. Say whatever you want. We finally chip through a part of the wall after only one more death to Rykard. We devour the God Devourer together. Then get the Antsper Rapier for another boss and take another death through the Dragon Barrel Gargoyle before coming back and finally finishing it off. Two more bosses down. I feel pretty good. Astell, your ass is but Nope, nope. Three more deaths. And four to Anastasia. Why not? Um, I want to just try something else, but first we have to clear out the Snowfield Turtle. Unlike the other turtles, this one has a bunch of lasers that shoot out at the back and one-shot us, and his toes one-shot us too. There is a really good place to be while we bring him down, and uh, yeah, we died a lot. But 20 minutes later, it's dead, and we can take on the Death Right Bird. Did you think Rykard was the big wall? No, 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 no. This is something else. First, it has to be nighttime. Every time you die, you have to reset the time at the grace to fight it at night again. That's annoying. But it can be rotted, so I try to poke it with a rapier to get the rot going. And the rot will do around uh, a quarter of its health, so that's not enough. We have a maxed out weapon though, so let's change the Ash of War to holy damage on it, which is super effective against the bird. We'll then start a combo of grafted sword boosting, golden vow boosting, procking the rot, and stabbing it in the uh, pelvic floor. It just doesn't work though. The hits one shot us and even the AOE after effects it leaves behind one shot us like the environmental hazards one shot us so we died 26 times not before we won just before I gave up this is gonna be a four streamer coming back I'm not dying to that bird again I'll die to Vike five times instead thank you it's just one shots y'all okay putrid tree spirit and Kalid yep that also one shots us but it also moves in a fucked up way that's like trying to count gumballs as you dump them into a spinning dryer nine deaths then I gave up. Regal Ancestors, oh sorry, we died on the way there, getting ganked by the Minotaurs, then we can actually fight the spirit and die there too, and then come back and finally beat a boss again. Boss number 45, we're probably gonna pass Sephiroth for the most bosses killed in a run. I also celebrated by dumping my water bottle on my computer accidentally. This was a fun run, great time. With a leveled up Giant Crusher, we return to the tree spirit, we can't wield it with the shield yet, so we have to two-hand it, but with a fire infusion, the damage is just gonna be enough to destroy it. No more deaths to that boss. There's another gargoyle in the Forbidden Lands, and we can even summon Millicent. I didn't know she was there, that's great. She's not great enough to save us from three deaths, but altogether, the boys, Millicent and I, turned that gargoyle into runes. If other bosses worked with the hammer, let's bring the hammer to the bird's pelvic floor. It works much better, though it still takes us a few more tries. The damage is just overall much, much better, and breaking its stance faster stops it from moving. Giving the boss less time to hit you is a huge plus when every hit will instantly kill you. We even get Vike dead before we're heading into the Ashen Capital for the Erd Tree Favor Plus 2, which will help us carry more weight. Vike also gave us a spell that'll help us carry more weight, but we need faith for that, not vigor. Um, okay, let's go try meet Loretta in the Howling Tree. For that, we have to go through the liturgical town, and ah, nope, never mind. That doesn't work. The archers just don't let me through. I can shield, but the arrows will push me back. Eventually, I need to fall and can't shield while falling. Rolling ends before the arrows are done, so uh, I really can't get through here. Oh, wait, we have the Lion's Claw. Let's just go Pancake Gideon, take him to IHOP. One, two, three. I'm out of magic. Oh, God. No. No, I died. Now Gideon will not monologue and instead spam a bunch of spells that one shot. Gideon is not free if you can't live through a single spell he casts. In fact, I'd say he's quite expensive. Liturgical town again? Uh, no, can't get around the archers. Placidious axe? No, hell, I even died falling down the elevator. Okay, uh, Gideon, die. Die, 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 and eventually we get there. Thank God for the boys. I needed just a few more runes. R.I.P. Hughes. Did you know you can summon Shibriri for the Godfrey fight if you do the Frenzy Flame? Huh, neat. Learning tons of new things this run. It was a mistake again, though, since I need Godfrey to stop smashing my face into the floor. So after a few deaths, it's just me and Godfrey and between one and five boys. These boys get together and rip daddy in half for once. Now, we have enough runes to finally answer the question of the video. Can you have the heaviest equipment load and still get it into light load? We cast Vikes Dragon Bolt for 17% more equip load. We get the Great Jarsenal Charm for 19% more equip load. The Earth Tree's favorite plus two and literally the most endurance we can have. And now we know that the answer is no. Well, uh... At least we had fun along the way, right? I donked a Knight's Cavalry just to round off the levels, then headed in to fight God with me, my armor, and my boys. 
I died in phase one. Next try goes better though. He focuses on the boys with the hammer slammer, so I'm able to break him down in phase two. After getting a crit on the Elden Beast, I realized we have no plan for Elden Stars. I realized this as it started, you know, using Elden Stars with the rings. Oh my God, how is this allowed? I guess because you can live through it with no vigor. Then get a few more hits in and kill your final boss at 16 hours and 50 minutes. The longest run time so far. But the most bosses so far, 54. But also 235 deaths. So really, the big question of this video is, do we finally have one that's worse than Sans? <gasps> no. But at least our skeleton boy finally has some company in the F tier. Next video, I'm using Elon Musk's terrible ass build. Maybe these two will get a third member of the F tier trio. To watch me do these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join my Patreon to support the channel and follow my other channel for videos about tabletop RPGs. 